Okay, it's one o'clock on Thursday. You know what time that is? Time for Life from Lockdown. So let me guys know if you can hear me. All right, everyone, good to see you there. All right, so we've got John from Scotland. We've got Hannah from Rotterdam. Mark from Chicago. Anders from Sweden. Chick from Glasgow. Is that two from Glasgow? Oh, John, what part of Scotland are you from? Hey guys, okay, you can hear me? Great, wonderful. So I already said hello to a few of you there. Hey Gary, good to see you. Gary Bazell, good friend of mine. And we've got Kev from Wales. I see a lot of familiar faces there. Good to see you guys, uh, some regulars. And what we're going to do here, just the people are coming in, because what happens is the minute I go live, then the notifications get sent out on YouTube. So it takes a couple of minutes for everybody to come in. And so we're just going to wait till we get, um, you know, a good group of us. We're up to 44 now. And once we get a good group, usually around about 100, we'll start. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to do a good job to try and really jump into the material maybe a little bit sooner this time. And um, if that's what you guys would like, <laughs> let me know there in the comments. Um, so it's good to see Andrew Kavanaugh there again. Hey, Andrew. Um, he runs a great group there, the Photoshop and uh, Photoshop and Lightroom group on Facebook. Check it out. He's got 100,000 people on there. Um, we've got Ronald from Florida. Patrick from Florida. Trish, Florida. I have not heard of that, that part of the country there. John from Oklahoma. Russ, good to see you again from London. And then, of course, we've got Viva from Calgary, Canada. And we've got Nari, Nari, Nari from Canada as well, from an unpronounceable place. <laughs> um, we've got New York City. We've got Betty from Houston. Chris from Colorado. David Holtstock, good to see you again from England as ever. How's the weather over there right now? Um, San Antonio, Texas. All right, we've got Cleveland, Ohio, Montreal, Canada, Indiana. We've got people from all over. And people are still coming in. I see the numbers are still growing pretty quickly. So usually um, takes a few, 57. Here we go, 59. All right, so let me just do the quick introduction that we usually do. So this is live from lockdown. I can see a lot of you are, are regulars and you've been attending it. Actually, I think I've, a lot of you have attended every single one. Let me know in the comments if you have uh, how many of these you've, you've done. If you can remember, just say all of them or all of them except for one. If you <laughs> can't remember how many we've done, because honestly, I can't now. Um, but since we've been in this lockdown with the global pandemic, what we're doing is we're getting together once a week here and we're doing this live stream. And this is just kind of a way for us to get together and try and keep our sanity also kind of keep a little bit of community and at the same time what we're doing is we're going to learn some photoshop stuff along the way so i do encourage you guys to drop in suggestions i do go through the chats i read what i can while we're live but once we're finished i go through and i read every single comment so if there's something you guys would particularly like to learn drop that in the comment and let me know because i am pulling from there from suggestions in fact we're going to do a little bit of 3d stuff today um, on top of everything else that we're going to do, of course. Um, and that was based on some suggestions. People are asking for a little bit of 3D. So I've got something I think you're going to really love. Um, so what I'm trying to do is mix it up a little bit. I want to make sure there's always something there for photography because we have photographers in here. But also, you know, not just sticking purely to photography. I think we also have designers and um, digital artists. So I want to touch on some of that. But also, even if you are a photographer, it's kind of fun to learn tools outside of your usual toolbox. Same thing as, um, you know, if you're a uh, an illustrator or a designer, it's always fun to learn those other tools because 
you know, you can get really good with a hammer, but sometimes you've got a screw and banging that screw with the hammer is not always the best way. So even a tool that might not be a tool that you would normally use can sometimes be really, really powerful and effective in your imagery. And also when you try something different, what it does is it opens up a new realm of possibility and it just kind of connects different parts of your brain and gives you ideas and sparks ideas. Like for example, music. I play guitar and um, that's my main instrument. I've also taught myself keyboards and drums and play a little uh, bass every now and then, not like Davey 504 level bass, but um, you know, just tinker. And what it does, playing other instruments, it opens up channels that I wouldn't have thought of before. Like the way the keyboard is laid out on a keyboard versus a guitar is very different. Um, so it just kind of sparks ideas. So don't ever close the doors to things inside of Photoshop or even other applications. You know, um, 3D applications, video editing applications, all of these um, are lessons that we can pull from and things that we can learn that are going to expand the, um, you know, just the reach of what you're able to do. So anyway, I hope that kind of makes sense. So don't be like, you know, hey, I'm a portrait photographer. I only do portrait photography. That's great, but do a little landscape photography every now and then. And it might, you might see something in light or something in composition or something you never really thought of before. So it, it can always help you in that area. So how many of you guys there are um, just purely photography, nothing else? How many of you are, are design only? One lane? Let me know if you're like one lane only or if you like to um, experiment with different things in different disciplines. I'd, I'd be curious to let me know. And if you do, just drop your top two or three in there. Um, currently teaching myself how to play acoustic. That's awesome, Vivi. Um, that's good. Guitar is a wonderful instrument. And in fact, if you don't play music at all, it's just really cool. If you do pick up an instrument, it's just, it's really a great experience. Um, and it also kind of just helps you always learning something new, especially right now we've got a little extra time. Uh, we're in lockdown. How many of you are still in lockdown? And uh, some of you like starting to open up a little bit now, you know, your cities or areas opening up or are they closing down more? Let me know there. And Suzanne is a photographer. Anne is a photographer. Um, the doctor would like to explore the filter gallery. That's a, that's a good suggestion. Very good one. Uh, Suzanne also does graphics. Chuck is photography. Photography open to all is John. Uh, n no way, nothing more fun than a good experiment, right? Um, photography, graphic arts, experiment. Uh, never met a creative outlet I didn't like. That's great, Tracy. Uh, photography is a hobby. Photography is a, as, oh, new to Photoshop, but you've been doing photography. Okay, that's useful. That's nice. Um, nice and cold in Buffalo. Supposed to snow this weekend. Well, we're having a heat wave right now, Mike. Um, so it's it's pretty hot here, which I'm not saying that to be bragging. I think I would actually prefer the cold, especially when I'm inside. I prefer it when it's cold and rainy outside. Um, photography... London still in lockdown. Play guitar still in lockdown. Okay, beginning to open up. Oklahoma, yeah, I've heard that. Um, another three weeks of lockdown. Photography, Montreal, mostly photography design. Level three lockdown here. Nevada is locked. All right. Not usually into photography here. Just love Photoshop and fun stuff, a hobby. That's great. Chicago, UX designer in lockdown. Uh, from Miss. Miss Miss Ray, Miss Rick, Miss Rick. Uh, digital illustrator, photography, color correction, T-shirt designer, extreme love Photoshop. That's awesome. I do too. One of the last states in the U.S. to begin to open. Uh, Greece here starting to open a little. Teaching graphics. Uh, lockdown. London. Photography and composite. We hit a hundred yesterday. Congratulations. I do a lot of art with stock photography. Um, photos, confectioning, bakery. Oh man, a baker. We have a baker here, William. Um, what do you bake? Confectionery, I guess you said. <laughs> um, Calgary Open, golf course, but, uh, Lisbon, starting to slowly, Calgary, laps videographer, mostly graphic design now, photography. Okay, so we got a lot of different stuff. Uh, New York is still locked down, yeah, the epicenter, unfortunately. Um, so, 
I think we're getting pretty close to where we're going to jump in and start doing some some techniques now. What do you guys say about that? So what I'm going to ask you to do is, um, of course, hit the like button, uh, let people know. Also, if you've got friends, uh, send out just quickly, well, social media, just to a quick post, let people know that we're live. You can cut and paste the URL off the top of the page there if you want. Um, so Twitter, Facebook, let people know they want to come in and join us and uh and they can come in and join us so why don't we just start off stretch our legs with something not too difficult let's choose file open i'm gonna go to my desktop and why don't we start with this this is just gonna be kind of fun this is the picture i used for the the cover thing and what we're gonna do is just explore a few things that we can do with color and just uh, being a little bit creative there and then after that, we'll jump into something else. So let's just kind of see where this goes. And hopefully it'll go well. I feel a, a little brain dead today for some reason. So I started jogging on the spot just before this. So try to get some adrenaline going. Um, I definitely am a person that likes some fresh air from time to time. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide these rulers. Control R and Command R will hide the rulers. All right. So we've got this tram that I shot here um, in San Francisco a number of years ago and uh, yeah I kind of was experimenting with the Dutch angle which is why it's tilted it's not um, crooked so we're not going to be doing a tutorial on, on straightening and cropping <laughs> right now but what we're going to be doing is just looking at little different things we can do with color so one of the things that we're going to start with is we're going to do something with some uh, gradients so we're just going to choose here under our adjustment layer and of course that's going to be hidden isn't it right underneath our let me drag this over to the side here because I don't want that to be hidden under my little video thing there okay so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna make this a little bit more narrow so I'm trying to maximize the screen real estate because what I have to do is drop the resolution down for these streaming normally I'm running it a little higher res so what we're going to do is we're going to go down to a gradient uh, a gradient map. So where are we? So we're going to choose a gradient map. Now when you go into the gradient map, the first thing that pops up is black to white. Now how the gradient map works is actually pretty simple. It What it does is it overlays the tones on the image and the black to white shows it the best. So we can see what it's doing is taking the darker areas, mapping them to black, the lighter areas mapping them to white because we can see that there's the shadows on the left highlights on the right just imagine that would be like a curve or a levels adjustment so if we reverse it this will show you perfectly what's going on so now the shadows on the left white is mapped to those the highlights on the right black is being mapped to them and that's why we get the inverse all right so let's turn off the uh, reverse there and dithering just kind of smoothens out a little bit. So when we get gradients, uh, they'll smoothen out if they're a little bit rough. All right, so let's have a look here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the properties inspector off to the side here. And I'm going to close down the library just so we can see the layers at the same time. So if we look at this top layer, one of the things that I do a lot when I'm using the gradient maps is I change the blending mode on these because right now the gradients will just take over everything. And let me kind of show you before I change anything in the blending modes, let me just click on here and we can see all our gradients are going to be available. Now, if you want to open up your legacy gradients, you can actually uh, do that, but you're going to have to go to the gradient panel. Let me show you how to do that. Under the gradient panel, I don't know why I clicked on that gradient panel, <laughs> Windows gradients. Okay, so here's our gradient panel. These are kind of like the newer colors. And if you want to see them, just hit the control key and click. And the reason I do that is I'll expand them all at the same time. So these are the gradients that ship with Photoshop 2020. Now this technique will work on earlier versions of Photoshop, although the gradients panel was added in 2020. Now the reason I'm in here is because I want to load up the older gradients as well. So if you click on this little, um, I think they call it a hamburger menu, we're going to choose legacy gradients. And then what that does is it loads in our legacy gradients. So if you've upgraded to Photoshop 2020 
and you wonder where all your presets you've got like all these new presets but you like some of the older ones and you miss them they're there so what i just did with gradients you can do the same with patterns shapes brushes color swatches all of the different uh, libraries are there so we can load them up and so the nice thing i like about some of these other ones and by the way when i load it in the gradients panel they're also going to appear in the properties panel here so let me just close down that and how did we get that properties panel? Well, we just applied that gradient map adjustment layer. And then when we click on right there on our adjustment, a gradient map is going to pop open. And now we can click and we see our drop down and there's our legacy gradients as well. So let me just click on one of the newer ones and I'll show you why I wanted to pick the legacy. See, this is what happens if we click on it. See how it's going from light blue to dark blue. And see what that's doing there is just mapping that color over the top. It's kind of interesting, gives it a cartoony look. And of course we can reverse it where now it's gonna look a little bit more like, uh, you know, that kind of a blue filter. Um, so there's a couple of things we can do. We can take the opacity down and just kind of blend these in with the existing colors. Or another thing that we can do that I prefer to do, let's put the opacity all the way up is I only want to affect the color on here. So I want to maintain the underlying tones. I don't want to lose those tones. So if we go from normal and we go down to color, then this is a good way to uh, just apply the color tone. So you'll notice that it looks a little bit more contrasty before it lost the contrast when we applied the gradient on top. Whereas now it shows the true contrast of the photo. And now I'll take the opacity down a little bit and we can start to mix the color and just kind of tune it in where you want. So if we look at the gradient map, this is before and that's after, we've got an interesting look. Now, why don't we go down though, because the reason I opened up the legacy toning is for a reason. And let's go under the legacy ones here. And under the legacy, you'll see something called photographic toning. Well, fancy that. So if we pop this open, we have ones that are designed to emulate film. And you'll notice that some of these have more than one color. So why don't we click on this one, for example. Notice that now we're going from white through to the oranges, the blues, and the blacks. And see that kind of interesting effect it's doing. And of course, let's turn the reverse off, put it the way it was designed to be. So black maps of the blacks, white maps of the whites, but now we've got this blue to orange. So it kind of gives it a split tone feel. And if I turn up the tones all the way up, you can see this is kind of giving a cool vintage look. So let's have a look at some of these other ones here with the photographic toning ones. So we can start here with some just simple black and whites and see how now we start to get some interesting looks in here. Some of these emulating vintage film and I'm just clicking through, just trying some different ones. And there's some neat color effects in here. Now, one of the things I like to do when I do find it, though, is, and if you're not going for a vintage look, just take that opacity and we can just kind of blend it. Look at that. We can blend it with our original photo. Now, another trick that you can do to add a little bit to this is to drop the saturation a little bit on the original color. So why don't we click on our background and what I want to do is just desaturate it slightly. And there's a number of ways we can do it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the adjustment layers and we're going to use these. So we could do hue saturation. That, that would work. In fact, why don't we just use hue saturation? So when we've got the hue saturation open, all we need to do is dial back the saturation. If we take it all the way back, it becomes a black and white image. But we want to just give it just a little touch of saturation. So there's some color in there. And now we're going to go back to our gradient map and see how we get a really neat look. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking away some of the influence of the original colors. So you can see that the original colors are not as strong. And now this gradient map is affecting it in a different way. See that? And now you might even reduce the opacity or increase it. Just play around and see what looks good to you. So I can even go for a lower amount. And if we look at that, you know, we've just gone from this to that in essentially just a couple of clicks. Now let's click on our gradient map again and this time we're going to turn it all the way up just so we can kind of do something else. 
So we can see here, there's our gradients, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the gradient. So we're gonna create our own, but I don't wanna start from a complex one like that. Let's start with something simple. Go into the basics. Start for black to white gradient. Now click on the gradient bar and the gradient editor is gonna come up. So now we can create our own um, gradient maps. And of course, if you guys have any questions here, um, just drop them in there. Um, so let's see what we've got. Just checking, got some questions there. Um, no, this is not directly affecting the background copy. It's a non-destructive layer. Um, so yeah. And don't worry about being late. Just come in when you can. <laughs> You're more than welcome. Um, glad, you, glad you joined us, Barry. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to make sure that we set a nice tone here for our shadows. So what we can do is we can click on the stop and then when we click the stop, this color box opens or becomes available, the color clicker. So we can click on there and now we can choose a color. So why don't we do something like a, I don't know, a greenish tone, let's go matrix style. So we can put a greenish tone into the shadows. And this is also a way you can do your own split toning. So I'm just gonna just tweak it around until I get the amount I like. Of course, I've got this turned 100% opacity, so let's go there. Click OK. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here. Let's click on this color stop. And why don't we give it a, a warming, warming color, kind of a yellowy orange, look at that. And if you feel like the saturation is a little too high, you can just slide it across here more into the whites. And see how you can dial that back? I'm just going to grab a water. I'm starting to sound like a frog. Kodak Porter look. There you go. I was wondering what that was called. Because um, I do like this green to kind of... Um, yellowy look i've seen it on movies and it's a great look so the kodak porter is the proper name for it good to know thank you for that gary um so let's go here if we want to reduce the amount of saturation in the green we can we just click on that stop and go into color and of course we can drag it down here see that so it gives us just so much control over how much we want now you can use a split toning of course inside of camera raw to do this but there's some things we can do here that we can't do in split toning. For example, we can add an additional stop. Now the interesting thing about this, let me take this to the middle here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the top here. Now what am I doing with this? This is an opacity stop. So that means I can dial back the opacity and watch what happens if I do this. Let's grab these and push them more over towards the sides. Let's click on that one. Let's go back that way. And so what we're allowing ourselves to do here is just kind of push these more towards the ends. Um, we don't really need to do it this way, but we can put another color in here. Let's do something like a, a blue. Okay, I'm just going to click OK to do that. And it doesn't seem to be doing a lot of the opacity there. I was kind of hoping that would go to a transparent, but it doesn't appear to do that. Okay. So the way we're going to have to do it is just the same way we've been doing it here is just push it more towards the whites there to reduce the amount of saturation. So we've got just a little touch of this color in here. Now we've got these stops here and these enable us to adjust how it blends so if you watch this carefully look look here at this gradient what we can do is as we move this over towards the side see how it changes the way that's blending so we can choose to make it very abrupt so that means just the, the shadows the darker shadows remember this is shadows on the left highlights on the right so that means now we're pushing these greens just into the darkest darkest shadows same thing we can do here. If we take this stop now and we push it over, now it's pushing these yellows just into the brightest highlights. So let's add a little more saturation to that color now. 
So we can see we've got more yellow, but notice it's not in the midtones anymore. It's pushing it into those highlights. Same here, it's pushing this into the shadows. And then of course, if I click on here and I set this to a gray color, just to a straight gray, what we're doing now is we're just pushing those tones into the extreme highlights and shadows. So let's have a look at that when we do this and now start to mix it with the original color. See what we've done now is we've added that in there, but we've just hit the extremes and, and it's a much more refined kind of a look. See that? And in fact, if I hide the original hue saturation and we just apply it, see what we're doing there? Let me turn that up a bit more. So it's not going so much across the whole board as it is just really forcing those colors into the edges and giving us interesting looking, um, an interesting kind of a look here. Okay, so let's turn our hue saturation back on and let's take our color back a little bit. So we're gonna kind of blend these two together. And now what we can do is I can put all of these into a layer group. And the reason I wanna put these into a layer group is so I can mask them. So let's select both of these, and then we're gonna hit Control G, and that's Command G on the Mac, and now we've got all our color in one group. Now the reason I put it into one group is because I can apply a layer mask to it. So why don't we apply this layer mask by simply clicking on the layer mask, and I'm just gonna move my properties panel down here, just snap it underneath there so we can see it. Okay, what we can do now is we can paint on how much of this we want. So now we could go pretty extreme. Let's go back in here and let's push the opacity really high on these. Just so I can show you. All right, so that works pretty good. So now we could go for a completely different type of a feel where we've got this sepia tone or well, it's not really a sepia tone, but this particular uh, color toning. And now if we grab a brush and we grab a black brush, let's grab the brush tool, make sure black is selected. And why don't we just select this to make it easy? So selections are not just for cutting out things. We're gonna use the quick select tool and make sure we select the background layer. And I'm just gonna draw around here just to quickly make a selection. So remember that selections are not just for cutting out things. They're also useful when we're painting. They can help us you know, paint and not go over the lines. So just kind of going around there, selecting that. Let's go all the way to the bottom. And I've gone too far, so hit the Alt or the Option key, and we're just gonna go down there and just quickly do that. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna just help us paint so we don't have to have such a steady hand or take as much time, really, is what it's about. There's a lamppost behind there, we don't want that. All right, so now we're gonna go back up to our layer there where our mask is. And let's just make sure we add all of this in the middle. Great. Hit the B key for brush. There's our brush tool. And let's make sure we've got a decent brush. I don't want to be using a scatter brush. Let's go to the top here. Soft round pressure. The scatter brush, by the way, was the one I used on the last tutorial. I don't know if you guys saw it when we did the tutorial on um, the lighting effects tutorial where we had that uh, little leaf and a clearing and then I kind of added a spotlight and then created some some uh, particulars kind of uh, pollen in the air. Check that out. It was the last video I posted on YouTube. All right, so what we're going to do is in this group here under the white mask, we're going to paint with black. And as we paint with black, look at this, we can just paint back our original colors. And so it's just kind of a, a fun way of working like this. So we can do that. And you've all seen this kind of effect. I'll turn off the selection. You know, and the, the more common one you see is the red rose and everything else is just black and white. But rather than just doing a plain black and white, notice that we were able to create much richer colors here for this background. I think it just makes it a little bit more interesting and not quite so um, cliche, if I, if I may use the word, you know, when this is done against a black and white all the time. Now here's another thing we can do. We can change the color of this green on this bus if we want. So let's click here on the background. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a hue saturation. I say bus, I mean a trolley, but let's go under here. We're gonna grab hue saturation. Okay, we've got a hue saturation adjustment layer. 
Now I'm going to grab this little finger at the bottom and I'm going to click there inside that green. Now when I do that, what it does is it makes a selection around this area that's telling me this area is the area that's been selected. In fact, let me pull it out a little to the side to make sure you can see it properly. There we go. So if you look there, that means that the color is just in there. So now I can move the hue slider and we could turn this into a burgundy color just or pink or whatever you want just by simply sliding over there. And if you see some areas where it looks like still some green in there, you can refine it by clicking on these little teeth. See how they let you really get in there and refine that. So that'll go into some of the sh reflections there. There we go. Now we're starting to get into the reflections. Watch the roof that I don't get too carried away there. So let's bring that back. There we go. And we can see, you know, what we've got there. And of course you can adjust that hue and change the color of that to whatever you want. And notice not only is that color here changing, it's also changing up there. Now, if you didn't want it to change up here, you only wanted the paint on the outside to change. Just simply click on the layer mask and we're gonna choose the brush notice it's white which means that it's not doing anything if we paint with black that means we can paint it away so I'm gonna hit the left bracket key to make my brush smaller and I can just paint that out and we can just go back and of course and it goes over any of these other areas you feel like it went too far you can just paint those back as well so you can paint back wherever you want and you can see what we've done here, just starting from here, going to there. You know, is this a wonderful piece of art? Probably not, but <laughs> what it does do is it shows you um, a lot of things we can do inside of Photoshop, how we can manipulate the colors and change the colors very, very easily. Colors are something that are very easily manipulated in Photoshop. In fact, that's what Photoshop was designed for in the first place um, when, uh, Thomas Knoll and his brother John Knoll, who worked in Industrial Light and Magic on Star Wars. Um, a lot of you probably already know this, and Thomas Knoll was an engineer and created Photoshop so they could do some things with color. And here it is. This is the Photoshop today that we all love. And yes, it came from Star Wars originally. So um, this week was Star Wars week, May the 4th. You know, May the 4th be with you. And then the Revenge of the 5th. So. That's a uh, little history. So I'm going to jump in. And I'm going to show you something else in a second here. We're going to do some fun stuff with some uh, 3D. Um, but it's not going to be the 3D that you've seen before, what you're expecting. I think you're going to like this. So just drop a question. Now, if you've got any questions about this or anything um, before we move away from this particular image. So just let me know there. Uh, seeing is no longer believing. That's that's right, Tracy. Um it's amazing what you can do in Photoshop. Um, yes, everybody, hit the like button. As Russ said, that helps the YouTube al YouTube algorithm and, and uh, will expose it to more people. Thank you for that. And also, if you're here and you haven't yet subscribed, uh, hit the subscribe button. You can see it right there on the screen somewhere on my screen. It's at the bottom right. You just see that little YouTube thing or the subscribe button underneath. Um, so, you know, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe, but what's that going to do for you? It's also going to let you know, because you'll see that little notification, turn on notifications. So next time we do a live stream, it'll send you a notification. And also when I upload a new tutorial and I upload a new tutorial every single Tuesday. And right now we're doing these live streams, um, on Thursdays. Now these are not going to be forever. These are just while we're under lockdown. So that's why it's called live from lockdown. So it's just kind of a, a thing we're doing for a while just to bring us together. All right, so I'm not seeing any other, let me see, questions here. Um, thank you, uh, doctor. Uh, fantastic. All right, so if there's no more questions on the, this image, we're going to move into the, the next tutorial. So just if you've got a question, I'm just going to wait one second because this will, um, once I close this, it's going to be gone forever. I'm not going to be saving it. All right. So here we go. It's gone. All right. <laughs> Let's move on. And we're going to do something different here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to reset my workspace here quickly. There we go. Just put everything back. 
and that way all our panels are nicely organized. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to open a photo. So we're going to choose File, Open. And I've got this picture here that I shot in New York. I believe it was New York, if I remember correctly. Definitely looks like New York. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do something with this photo. So it's all crooked and kind of falling over. So what we want to do, first of all, is we want to straighten it. Because we're going to use this to do something. But we can't do it unless it's nice and even. So why don't we fix that? So we're going to go under the crop tool here. And if you look under the crop tool, you see another option called perspective crop. And then what this enables us to do is just go around the shape and then it's going to put that into a square crop because when you crop you can only crop straight right so you're going to tell it how you want it to go it's a lot easier in practice than it is to explain let me show you so what we're going to do is we're going to click once and then we're going to go across we're going to click again so what we've done is we've created a line. Now notice as I go here, it drags out. So what we're going to do is define four corners. All right. So that's going to be our crop right there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit the enter key and I'm just checking um, the questions. Let me hit the enter key and we're going to crop that. Now it's nice and straight. Um, what have we got here? Why is the saturation below the gradient level than above? It's a way to remove color. Yeah, to remove color, when we do it like that, um, all we need to do is just uh, desaturate it um, or lower the opacity on those layers that we were creating. Um, Ashton, I'm not quite sure I understand your question there. Um, why is the saturation below the gradient level than above? I don't quite understand that I'm really sorry all right so maybe you can uh, just reword that and I'll, I'll see if I can help you all right so what we've done is we've done this okay so there's a couple of things we can do with this now one of the things you could do is this would be a perfect time to create a brush and if you're ever going to be creating brushes just make a selection over it and then just choose edit define brush preset and now we're gonna get could just call it a building and click OK. All right, so now we've got a, a building brush. And if I started painting with this, you could see that we have a brush for a building. But that's not what we're going to do. I just wanted to let you know you could do that because one of the things people don't always do when they create a brush from a photo is straighten it. You want to straighten it first, but here's what we're really going to do. So we're going to click on 3D. And now that we're in 3D, we're going to go down to New Mesh from Layer and there's a postcard there's different things but we want to go to a mesh preset and under here we're going to choose cube wrap so just click and this will give me an option to switch to my 3d workspace which i probably am not going to do because um it'll it'll mess up everything we're doing here all right so here we go so we've got our picture here now watch this As I click and drag, notice now we have created a 3D model out of that building, just like that. Now, when I went under the 3D mesh, um, when we did the, pre the mesh preset, you saw a cube and a cube war wrap. A cube will put our texture just on the front surface only, and then the rest of it will just not have texture on it. Whereas the cube wrap will put it onto every surface. So of course there's a little glitch in here. If we look at the top, we can see that um, we've got windows in there, which we could easily fix. It's not hard to fix at all, but um, that's essentially we can do that. So what I'm going to do though is I'm going to make our document a little bit bigger. So I'm going to click on here and I'm just going to grab my crop tool. And I'm just going to drag it out here, make it a big, bit bigger so that we can see better. Hit enter. And it's very easy to do that. And of course, now we've got a little bit more space there around our 3D model. Because what it was doing is it was constraining it to the size of that document that we created, which of course was once we cropped that picture down, was quite small. 
So we've got a little more space here. Um, let me just refresh this because the chat on my screen here is not going there. How are we doing here? Um, well worth the lockdown just to get the live stream. Well, I'm glad you enjoy it. Can't wait to play with colors. Why is the saturation below the gradient? Uh, there's a way to remove. Oh, here we go. Oh, um, Steve Ellis, I don't know if you watched in the beginning, but the reason the, the desaturation layer is underneath, that I put it underneath the gradient layer was because I wanted to just desaturate the original photo a little bit first so that that color wouldn't be influencing the gradient as much. So I didn't, so I wanted to reduce that original one and then colorize it with the gradient. If I put that one above, it would also be desaturating the gradient layer, which would give us less control. So that just is why I did that. So hopefully that helps you. All right. Okay, so yeah, this is not so hard. 3D is not so bad. Um, obviously, <laughs> there's a lot more we can do in 3D. And I'm, I'm going to show you a couple of things in here. Now, I'm going to have to confess I'm a little rusty in Photoshop's 3D. Um, so you'll bear with me if I make any mistakes. So it is, it's quite possible I might. Okay, so let's choose window. <laughs> I'm going to go down here and I'm going to pop open the 3D. Of course, it doesn't take very long to get back to speed. I say I'm rusty. Is, um, I do use Maya for 3D. And I do a little Photoshop here and there. And then it's easy to forget. But it only takes a few hours or whatever to get everything back again um, once you start using it. All right, so I've opened the 3D panel. And what the 3D panel does is it works in combination with the properties panel. So everything that we really want are going to be in these two panels. That's basically what that 3D workspace is giving you. So why don't I just give you a quick overview before I uh, go in here and show you what I'm going to do with this. I, I'm not going to ex attempt to explain everything about 3D in this time, but maybe this will help you. The first thing if we click at the top level is the environment. So the environment is the world around it okay so we've got lighting here so this is ambient lighting it's shadow it's it's things like that in this case it's using image-based lighting don't don't even worry about that right now so that's just our environment there it sets that then we go down into our scene our scene is essentially a document that we're working in and this contains our geometry which is our models so you'll see that it, this is you know I think it calls them meshes here um, and these are the cube. These, and if we have other objects, they will be in here. And a camera. So we click on the current view is the camera, and this is where we can change it. Right now, it's a 35 millimeter lens, more or less. I can make it a 12 meter, a 12 millimeter. Now it's a wider angle. Notice there's more distortion, just like on a real camera. And of course, it looks further away. Or we could go to a 90 mil, which is going to zoom it in and of course have less distortion. So that's kind of how that works. And why does that matter? I'll tell you why it matters, because if you're going to match a 3D object, and here's a good tip for, uh, for you guys. If you're going to match a 3D object to a photograph, look at the metadata in the photo, see the lens that was used, and then change the field of view here, and it's going to match. That's, that's kind of a, just a little trick there. All right, so why don't we carry on? And if we look at this, we've got our material here, or our geometry. I guess they call it the mesh in Photoshop. It's called geometry in, uh, in Maya. There's a lot of different names for it, but it also contains things like our lighting. So if we turn that off, our lighting is off, we can turn the lighting on, and we can change the different types of lighting. But if we look under here, the material, the material is our texture. So if I turn this material off, it's just a cube. So what makes it look like a building was essentially it took that photograph that I had cropped down and it just placed it onto each of the sides. And if you want to see the sides, if we clip here, let's go through here. Here's our, our, our gradient. Where are we? Our cube. All right. I told you I might go a little funny here. Yep. Okay, so it's only going to show that, oh, of course, because it's a cube wrap. 
All right, so had I used a regular cube, you would see six parts there. You would see the six faces. But because I did a cube wrap, that means whatever goes on one surface is going to be duplicated on all the other surfaces, which is fine for what we're doing here. But what I want to do is I want to show you something cool. When we click on the material, it opens up in our properties panel. There's different things we can do in here. Glow, metallic roughness, what does all this do? Well, what it does is it enables us to add things like uh, bump maps and different things like that to add depth. But what we're going to look at here, just so you can kind of see how they work, is we're going to work on transparency. So if I turn the opacity down, this would start to become semi-transparent. See that? But we can do way better than that. What we can do is we can actually go in, click on here, and we can create a new texture. But I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you a way how we can make these windows transparent just very, very little time, very little effort. So what we're going to do is go to the cube material here in the 3D panel. And we can see that there. If we go to our layers panel, we can also see it there. So there's our material here, which is our default texture. Turn it on and off. See that? So what we can do is right click and we can choose to edit this. So we want to edit this. So I'm actually going to, I guess, just double click it. There we go. And that opens it as a smart object. See that? We've opened it as a new document. This is our texture. Okay, what I want to do is I want to create a map to tell this where I want it transparent. Don't worry, it's not as hard as it may sound. So we're going to go to the channels panel. Then under channels, we're going to look for the channel with the most contrast between the windows and the surface of the building. The green has a little bit more. It looks like the blue has the most. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this channel by clicking it and dragging it down to the little plus icon. Now, if you didn't see that, control J is another way of doing it, although I believe you can see it there on the screen. Um, so what we're going to do with this blue is we're just going to crush it. I want those darks to be dark and I want those lights to be light. Control L for levels. Now that we've got our levels and we're not doing an adjustment layer, we're applying it directly here. We want to just crush this. Notice as we do that, the brights get brighter, the darks get darker. And essentially what we want to do is just go here where we're seeing there's our windows. So click OK. And what I want to do is I want to just copy and paste this. So Control A to select all, Control C to copy. And then we're just going to click on the RGB here and turn off. So we're just back on our normal channels. So what we've done is we've created that channel and we've saved it to the clipboard by copying it. So if we go back to the layers, create a new layer, and now we're just going to paste it. Control V will paste that. Excellent. So what we're doing right now is we are modifying the texture. Now, I'm not going to be using this texture to replace the other one. What I'm going to do is save it as a different one. So we're going to choose File, Save As. Let's go to our desktop, and we'll call this one Trans. Or transparency. <laughs> Tresp, Tresp. Okay, that's how I type trans. And we're going to save it just as a PSB. That's fine. Click OK. Now we're going to close this. We're not going to save the document. Notice that it hasn't changed anything. Okay, this is where it gets good. So now we're going to go under our opacity and we're going to click here. And what we want to do is load our texture. Now we're going to select this. Now what's probably going to happen is this is going to be inverted. So let me actually fix it before I do it. Let's just choose File, Open. We're going to open this texture just so we can see it. There's our texture. And I want inverted. So Command I for Invert and then just save it. Because how it works is white is going to be ignored, but black is going to be used by the 3D. Watch this. So let's go under the perspective crop here. And I'm just zooming in a little bit so you guys can see that better. Let's choose the opacity, click on that little icon, and we're going to load the texture. Now the texture we're going to use here is this transparency texture that we created. Click open, and boom, look at that. Now you can see 
that those are transparent. Looks like all the windows are just kind of uh, broken when I'm moving it like that, but they actually are a lot cleaner than that. And then if we render it, let me draw the, a little selection around there, Control Shift Option R, just all the modifiers, and R will render it, and you'll start to see it looks a little better. Now, if you wanted to cut out the top ones, you could. You could go in and, of course, do much more highly detailed transparency there. But notice that the areas that are not, let me show you this. Let's go here, back to the transparency, watch this. If I hit Control L for levels, actually let's make an adjustment layer. Let's just choose hue saturation. So I'm just gonna pop a hue saturation adjustment layer on there. And let's take the lightness up. And the reason I'm doing that is I just wanna make these a little bit gray. I'm gonna save it. Watch this, we go back here and now when we load these in, let's go back to our model, clicking on there, make sure we choose our material. There's our opacity. Well, actually, I guess I could have just dropped the opacity slider back. So I did the gray to kind of make them semi-transparent, but I don't need to do it. I can also slide this now that I realize. So see now, rather than being fully transparent, now these are semi-transparent if I render it you'll see that let me render it sorry if that was complicated uh, polka dot studio um, yeah 3d can get yeah it's exactly like making a displacement map except we're making it for the um, transparency so yeah exactly so you can use it for all kinds of things you can do it for bump to add texture you can do it to add transparency. There's a lot of different things we can do there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit on here. Let me just zoom out. I'm gonna cancel that. And I wanna show you just something else here we can do with this just quickly before we finish this. With our 3D objects, if you go under 3D, you can snap these to the, to the ground move objects to ground plane you do that and now it'll just kind of snap it to the ground now notice I'm rotating on this this is our object because I have the object selected if I select on scene and I move this now the entire scene will move around see that and of course we kind of tilted that so we could grab that object and then we could go into the properties and we could reset it if we wanted um, just by clicking here just resetting those, see what that does, and move it back to the ground. And now when we move that, whoop, move just the scene, let's go back here to the scene, now everything moves. Now the reason I wanted to show you this is I wanna show you something else. Really quickly, we can build a city from this now. Control J will duplicate that layer. And what we can do is just click on here on the object and we can just slide out a copy. Just like that, so now we've got two. And if we wanna put these together, select them both. Control E, which would normally merge, but what it does when we're working in 3D is it merges them together into one. So we could go ahead and we could just start duplicating these buildings and sizing them and building an entire city out of these. Um, all right, guys, so questions. We've got more questions. Uh, so it has nothing to do with straightening the building, right? Well, actually it did. First of all, we had to straighten a building in order that we could create these textures. If we hadn't straightened those buildings, we wouldn't have been able to get these textures to work like this. They would have been all kind of weird and strange. Now there's other things you can do with some lighting. If we click on the lighting here, we can see that right now we're using an infinite light. What does that mean? It just means that as we move this light around, it's just kind of consider it like the sun. And so we can go there. Oh, there's another way you can do this. If you hit the Alt or the Option key and click, you can target those different areas and move the light in that way. Now there's other types of lights we can use. We can use a spotlight. And these are gonna look a little bit like some of the lights that we did in those lighting effects tutorials on photography. So if you wanna target this light, rather than try and use all the widgets and everything, which I could explain, just hit the Alt or the Option key and click and it'll target it, and now we get something that's starting to look a little bit like, you know, Batman kind of thing. 
Um, another thing too is if we hit these and you have a ground plane with shadows, we're not going to get into all of that because just because of time. You can actually shift drag on the shadows as well is another way that you can move these. So let me just quickly show you if we start to render this. And, you know, let me know if this is something you guys are interested in, like maybe doing something much more in depth in, tuto in tutorial block in 3D. Um, just like the beginnings of Minecraft. <laughs> there you go. So, you know, this is just a, just a taste of some of the things you can do in 3D inside of Photoshop. Um, but if you watch this, you probably need to watch it a few times to kind of uh, get it if you're new to 3D. Um, but there's some building blocks there you could play around with, start experimenting. You'll be surprised some of the things that you guys could do. Um, so anyway, guys, curious if you have any questions or anything like that. Um, <laughs> there's one menu stuff. I know 3D is not for everyone, Mike. I get it. I get it. Absolutely. Um, I think 3D is one of those things you either love or you hate. Um, but sometimes if you don't really get it, and once you start to understand it a little bit better, it can definitely be uh, more enjoyable. Um, so I do have some basic, more basic 3D tutorials that I've done on Photoshop Cafe and on YouTube there that do explain some of the basics. And I've really been toying with the idea of just creating a full course um, you know, from the very beginning. I don't know if it's something you guys are interested in. Let me know if that's something you are. Um, and also we do have a course on Photoshop Cafe that Stephen Burns has actually done a few of these. I don't know if Stephen's here, but he's actually done a few um, actual courses, full length courses on Photoshop Cafe there on 3D. So um, yeah, 3D is, is, is a little bit harder. It's a little bit more technical, but the interesting thing is once you start, once you learn the tools, it's not that different in photography. Uh, the lighting is similar. The focal length is similar. Um, and it was actually one of the things that got me into drones because I doing 3D um, and photography, a drone is like 3D in real world where I can move it around and get those angles that, you know, I would get only inside a 3D camera, um, you know, in Maya or Photoshop or, or other applications like that. Whereas with the, um, the drone, it, it kind of enables you to do that, which is really kind of fun. So anyway, guys, um, curious, uh, any more questions or anything like that? We're just about ready. Um, next week, we're going to be doing our live drawing for winning the Wacom tablet. We've got two tablets we're giving away. Um, I'll tell you how you can win those. Go on the YouTube channel here. You'll see a video I posted on my work from home setup. Drop a comment in there. And we're going to be drawing a winner to win one of these, a brand new Wacom Intuos Pro Medium. Beautiful tablet, love it. So if I have one piece of hardware apart from my computer, it's, it's my Wacom tablet. And I know a lot of people feel the same way. Um, so we are very generous. Uh, we are very fortunate that Wacom gave us two tablets to give away. So one of those, just drop a comment. We're going to be drawing it live on here next week. And someone is going to win that tablet. Um, and then the second one is just go to the article on photoshopcafe.com and you'll see at the bottom there where you can enter to win the other tablet. And we're going to do a drawing there from our social media. So that'll be on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Uh, make sure you follow us there at Photoshop Cafe, of course. And, uh, and also here, make sure you follow us here um, by subscribing. And we're going to give those away. So that's next week. That'll be happening. And uh, so guys... Any more questions? I'm just going to give you a second for questions to pop up. Otherwise, I think that's going to be it. Also looking for suggestions for next week. Uh, drop in some suggestions there. I'm going to look through all the comments and any suggestions you have for next week's uh, live stream, any tutorials you like or anything like that, go for it. Any Photoshop questions, drop them in there. And um, of course, next Tuesday, we'll, we'll be doing another tutorial, of course. Um, hi from Brazil. Do you use Adobe Dimension? Yes, I do. Um, I actually did a tutorial there where I did a, um, a Cochrane from the old uh, Star Trek. Uh, I don't know if you guys watch the old Star Trek movies um, where he was building his uh, rocket ship out of a um, missile. And so I kind of did a, an homage to that in Dimension where I took that missile and I dropped it into a scene. It's a lot easier to use, of course. 
Um, much easier to use than uh, the 3DM Photoshop. Um, and if that's something, where do we drop the comments? Just drop the comments right here into the chat pot. And also when the um, this video goes live later, you can drop comments in there too. Um, to win the prize, you have to drop the comments just into the comment field on YouTube in Photoshop Cafe. So just uh, you'll see that other video that I posted. Just drop a comment on that video. And that, that's where we'll be doing the drawing there. Um, so we've got some window glare and reflections. Okay, so I'm going to look at. Um, what else we got here? Explore the filter gallery. Okay, that's a good that's a good one there. Um, what else we got here? A filter gallery. Okay. When we're going live again, we're going to go live at 1 o'clock next Thursday. Um, frequency separation and or luminosity masks. I'm actually planning, Steve, I'm planning on doing a luminosity masks um, tutorial here um so i'll be dropping that when it's done i'm not sure when yet but i've been working i've already did a frequency separation one um so maybe we can consider doing them during these live streams as well um perspective in composite okay compositing um work from home part two was super nice to see your workspace ah thank you um in-depth brushes would be good okay that's that's one we could definitely do um and a Wacom. Looking forward to that. And of course, we can do a Wacom tutorial if you guys want to. We can look at some of that. Um, how many of you would be interested in, you know, maybe uh, brushes and Wacom tutorial? Uh, let me know there. That's something else we can consider doing. And uh, Blender or Cinema 4D. Um, I my Cinema 4D doesn't work anymore. Um, my I had a edition, it was a student edition or whatever it was. It was a one that I uh, I had, but it, it doesn't work. The license doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so I'm using Maya right now for my 3D. Um, I was using Maya before and I was using Cinema 4D, but I have three copies of it and none of them work anymore. So unless I can get it working again, then I'd be happy to. Um, Blender and Photoshop. I haven't really used Blender be honest um so i'm probably not the best one for doing that um all right you would welcome tutorial sure yes for brushes all right so that gives me some good ideas and uh and i'm gonna make sure i have a look at those and uh, incorporate those into next week so guys until next thursday at 1 p.m pacific time I look forward to seeing you all again. Thanks for joining me in live, live by, <laughs> so I told you my brain wasn't working very well. Live from lockdown. Why is the simple speech become difficult when you're locked inside a house? Um, I'm not locked in. Well, actually, I am locked in, but <laughs> I can unlock the door and step out, but, and go for a walk, uh, which I'm allowed to do. I can probably should do that. <laughs> what else we got here? Hey, thanks for the stream. I have a problem with my color lookup doesn't allow me to apply that filter do you have any ideas um hmm. let's have a look here just while we're doing that your color lookup so if you go under the adjustment layers here let me drag these out and if you go under your adjustment layers you should see the one that says color lookup and then that will appear there. Then you want to go to your properties panel and then you're going to click where it says load 3D LUT and you should see these. If those don't appear, um, you might need to reset your preferences in Photoshop or possibly even reinstall Photoshop because they'd be moved from their default location. And then at that point, you should just click on a LUT and that should appear on top. Of course, you're not going to see it a lot here, but it was oh, kind of interesting with the 3D, I guess. Yeah, there we go. It does work. So you can apply it to whatever you want. And then it should just appear there like that. Um, I don't know if it works in CMYK. You, you might want to make sure you are in RGB mode. It should work in 16-bit. So I've just changed this to a 16-bit channel. And the color lights still work in here. Yeah. So that's how we'd use them. Um, so if you don't see them there, I would uh, recommend uh, maybe contact Adobe Tech Support. Well, that's kind of cool. It's got a matrixy look. All right, guys. So anyway, 
Thanks for coming. And we will see you guys next week. Stay safe. <laughs>